okay so in this lecture we are going to uh, discuss about some examples of maximal and prime ideals so let me take the first question now so i'm uh, going to take a ring which is z cross z and i'm going to take an ideal which is given by z cross singleton zero now my question is that is i a prime ideal is i a maximal ideal so i'm going to check whether i is prime and maximal both so we know that uh, we are going to apply an important theorem for maximal ideals what is the important theorem for maximal ideal uh, if m is a maximal ideal then uh, r by i is what r by r by m is a field so this is what this theorem i have mentioned in my previous lecture now we will mention the next important theorem in this lecture is that i is said to be a prime ideal if and only if the same thing if and only if r by m turns out to be an integral domain okay so these two theorems will actually help us in giving this answer so i will repeat this theorem when when is i a prime ideal the condition is that if and only if the uh, quotient r by m turns up to be what turns up to be an integral domain and you know that both these theorems hold under which condition the ring first of all must be commutative ring and it must be with unity this is very important condition so now let me look at the first part so if i look at the quotient of z cross z z cross singleton zero okay what is this isomorphic to we know that this is isomorphic to z quotient singleton zero which is nothing but isomorphic to z this means that z cross z quotient z cross singleton zero is isomorphic to what it is isomorphic to z and what do we know about z we know that z is an integral domain okay but z is not a field so this means that by the virtue of this particular theorem by the virtue of this particular theorem i can say that if r by m is an integral domain then the ideal m I'm sorry i should write here m then m will become a prime ideal if r by m is not a field then the ideal m will not become a maximal ideal so this means that from this particular thing we can now conclude that z cross singleton zero is a prime ideal because we have got that it is integral domain but z cross singleton zero is not a maximal ideal of z cross z so this example actually tells us that you can find a prime ideal which is not a maximal ideal in the set z cross z let me take one more example now suppose i am taking the ring r z cross z again and the ideal that i'm choosing is z cross 3z then what can i say about this ideal i is this ideal i a maximal ideal is this a prime ideal so that is also easy so z cross z quotient z cross 3z is isomorphic to z quotient 3z which is nothing but isomorphic to z3 correct so what do you know about z3 we know that z3 is a z3 is a field right so as soon as i get z3 is a field i can immediately declare that z cross 3z is what this is a maximal ideal of z cross z the question remains that is it a prime ideal now we know that every field is integral domain we have proved this in our 
previous classes that every field is always an integral domain and this means that z3 is integral domain because z3 is a field so z3 also becomes an integral domain and therefore this means that z cross z quotient z cross 3z is also integral domain and as soon as this quotient becomes integral domain this person becomes what this person becomes a prime ideal of z cross z so in this example we have proved that this ideal that we were talking z cross 3z this ideal is maximal ideal as well as a prime ideal let me take one more example now suppose i'm taking in the ring z cross z i'm taking ideal i to be z cross 4z now is i a maximal ideal is i a prime ideal what is the answer so clearly now you understand that z cross z quotient z cross 4z is isomorphic to z quotient 4z which is isomorphic to z4 and what do you know about z4 z4 is clearly not a field because we know that zp is always a field if p is a prime so z4 is not a field and therefore this ideal is not maximal okay so that the ideal is clearly not a maximal ideal is z is is it of integral domain z4 is not integral domain because z4 contains two bar into two bar is zero bar this means that z4 has zero divisors correct z4 has zero divisors and therefore it cannot be an integral domain remember what is an integral domain it should not contain zero divisors right so this means that this ideal is neither maximal nor a nor a prime ideal so this is the third example let me move to the next example suppose i am working in the ring of only integers okay i'm working in the ring of integers and the ideal i that i'm going to choose is singleton zero ideal okay is this singleton zero ideal i is it a maximal ideal is it a prime ideal so the answer is again clear in the previous lecture we have proved that singleton zero is prime ideal of z what was the reason that if a into b is zero this means either a is zero or b is equal to zero so this means that this was a prime ideal now is it a maximal ideal you consider the quotient what is z quotient singleton zero we know that z quotient singleton zero is always isomorphic to z right and therefore because i will recall because ring quotient singleton zero is always isomorphic to the ring itself so this means that this is z and therefore this is not a field i know that z is not a field and this means that this singleton zero cannot be a maximal ideal of z let me move to one more example suppose i'm talking I'm, I'm in the ring z12 and the ideal that i'm talking is 0 bar 4 bar and 8 bar okay is the ideal i maximal ideal is the ideal i a prime ideal so the answer is pretty easy so we know that what is z12 quotient i the order of z12 quotient i is how much it is 12 by 3 which is 4 and this means that z12 quotient i is isomorphic to z4 z4 is not field and z4 is also not an integral domain this means that 
this ideal i is neither prime nor maximal if we take a different ideal in z12 if i take an ideal z in z12 if i consider an ideal as 0 bar 3 bar 6 bar and 9 bar what can i say about i is i a maximal ideal or is it a prime ideal so again z12 quotient i what is the order of z12 quotient i it is 12 upon 4 which is 3 and this means that z12 quotient i is isomorphic to z3 right and z3 is a field and therefore this means that this ideal i is clearly a maximal ideal but we know that every field is also integral domain and therefore this means that z3 is also an integral domain this means that z12 quotient i is an integral domain and this means that i will again become a prime ideal also so we have got in z12 an ideal which is maximal and prime both okay so these are the examples of prime ideals and maximal ideals so after looking at all these examples now it is a time that we should have some connection between maximal ideals and prime ideals is every maximal ideal a prime ideal need not be true is every prime ideal a maximal ideal that also need not be true but under some condition every maximal ideal will become a prime ideal so that theorem we will state and we will then stop here so what is that theorem the theorem says that if r is a commutative ring with unity so if we are working in a commutative ring with unity then every maximal ideal is a prime ideal so this condition is saying that if this theorem is trying to tell us that if you want to show some ideal is a prime ideal and if you are working in a commutative ring with unity just check whether it is maximal if you just check if it is maximal and if you are working in a ring with unity then that ideal by the virtue of this theorem will automatically become what it will become a prime ideal okay so for a what is an example of a ring in which this theorem cannot be applied we know that if you consider the ring 2z this is a commutative ring without unity okay with this we will stop in this lecture